Marine Land is a theme park located in Canada less than two miles from Niagara Falls. This massive park has some iconic attractions and several animal exhibits, but it's most defined by its weirdness. Usually I like strange parks, but not all the quirks of Marine Land are a good thing. Find out everything you need to know about this one-of-a-kind park in this review. This park opened back in 1961 as Marine Wonderland and Animal Farm. The name was condensed down to just Marine Land just a few years later, which has gone by ever since. The park started mostly as an aquarium with popular sea creatures such as dolphins and whales, and that's what the park is still most well known for to this day. But the park expanded its offerings over the next two decades. Land animals were added in the 1970s, and rides were added in the 1980s. The park recently underwent a substantial drought for a new attraction, but 2021 finally brought a new ride in the Star Voyager. While this park's diverse offerings are notable, the park has been involved in countless lawsuits and protests over the years related to its keeping of sea creatures. Over the park's 60-year history, some animals have escaped and many have died. Some were due to old age understandably, but others were related due to the poor conditions and care they received. There's too much to cover here, so I encourage you to do your own research on the issue. What I can say is that the conditions I witnessed in 2022 were superior to what I saw back in 2010, but I mainly visit this park for the rides. As you approach the park, you'll see the Sky Screamer drop tower from miles away. This attraction photobombs most pictures in Niagara Falls, and it's the only attraction you can see from outside the park. If you arrive by car, you'll park in this long and narrow parking lot. You can park on both sides of the main entrance. Since this park typically has minimal crowds, it's easy to park by the gate. This park has always been a bit pricey. As of 2022, day tickets cost 51 Canadian dollars. When I purchased my ticket, I was automatically upgraded to a season pass for free, even though I only plan to visit once, so this seems like a nice perk for locals. Marine Land opens at 10 a.m. daily. If you're seeking out the credits, there are two important notes. First, the front gates close two hours before the park does. Second, the park is notorious for staggered openings. The animal enclosures open with the park, but many of the rides do not. The only rides available at park opening are the cluster of kitty and family rides near the front of the park. Most of the large rides towards the back of the park are scheduled to open at 10.30 a.m. However, my most recent visits saw those rides open much later than that. Maintenance was just starting their work on the attractions at this time. For example, Dragon Mountain didn't open until two and a half hours after the park. The one major ride that opened on time was Sky Screamer, which officially doesn't open until noon, which is noted on a permanent sign by the ride. These varied opening times are frustrating if you want a quick visit focusing on the rides, but when the attractions open, you at least won't have to wait long. I have never seen any lines for the adult attractions at this park, and my most recent visit took place on a holiday weekend. The only rides I've ever seen with modest weights are the family rides towards the front of the park, but even still, I've never seen those rides with lines longer than 10 to 15 minutes. Part of this is because of the efficiency of the staff. The crews work in the attractions load and check them fairly quickly, so it's easy to marathon rides at this park if you so choose, especially because the staff usually lets you stay in your seat due to the lack of crowds. All the staff members I interacted with were very friendly as well in my most recent visit, which was a major plus. Now let's talk about this park's layout because it's one of the park's biggest cons. Emphasis on the big. Many parks are landlocked and struggle to find room for new additions. Just look at Canada's Wonderland up north. Marineland does not have this problem. In fact, it has the opposite problem. This park owns over 1,000 acres. Much of this land isn't developed, which makes it annoying to navigate the park. You have these long, empty walks between attractions. It is surprisingly quiet with the lack of rides, food stands, and games to liven up the midway. The most energy you'll get is a staff member riding by in a truck or a golf cart. And get used to the sight. It happens regularly. The paths are super wide, so I even saw vehicles riding side by side at points like a highway. If only the streets of Boston had this much room for cars. So remember to look both ways before crossing the street at Marineland, or else you get flattened into a piece of Canadian bacon. The park mostly forms a long loop, but there are two egregious dead ends that I need to point out. First, 
The midway past Dragon Mountain and Star Voyager leads to some land animals, but that midway just stops and leads to a construction site, so you'll have to backtrack if you head out this way to see the buffalo and deer. Second is Skyscreamer's location atop a hill. While this ride's placement atop a 150 foot hill allows it to offer some of the best views of any attraction, you have to go on a hike to access it. The only way to reach Skyscreamer is by this single pathway that winds around the hill. At a brisk pace, it takes 3-4 to four minutes just to reach the top, and there's nothing else up there. No other rides, shops, or food stands, just Skyscreamer and this awkwardly big empty plaza. Speaking of missing amenities, this park has a severe lack of food and bathrooms. Most of these facilities are towards the front of the park. The food stands I saw towards the back were shuttered up, and even some of the ones towards the front were closed too. Since I only spent a half day at this park, I didn't intend to try any food, and it's probably a good thing due to the limited offerings. Worse, this park is just 3-4 to four bathrooms, and that's astounding for a park of this size. And there isn't even one in the entire back section of the park. If you're by Dragon Mountain and need to use the restroom, you'll have to walk at least 10 minutes. I do need to praise the park for its general appearance though. This park looks pretty nice with the abundance of trees. While a majority of the walking path is exposed to the sun, you can easily duck into shade on the edge of the pathways. I also like the architecture of this park. At one point walking down the midway, I came across a castle. Then many attractions have ornate and shaded queue buildings. The highlight is undoubtedly that of Dragon Mountain, where you enter this giant rock cave carved out in the shape of a dragon head. Now let's talk about the ride lineup, which is the reason I come here. Marineland has a fairly limited ride lineup, but they have some unique attractions that tick off several boxes. For families, you have a cluster of attractions towards the front of the park. This includes some smaller spinning rides. Then you oddly have the park's new for 2022 attraction Eagle Tower, which is a kitty drop tower, which is opening right across the midway from Orca Screamer, which is also a kitty drop tower of comparable height. It's like when Six Flags New England placed two boomerangs right next to each other. This area also includes one of the park's two roller coasters in the Ladybug Coaster. This is a small Zier Tivoli coaster. It's not thrilling, but it does offer a smooth ride with four laps. And if you want the credit, yes, adults can ride this without a child. The signature coaster here is Dragon Mountain. This arrow looper opens the tallest coaster in the world, and it still holds the record for the largest steel coaster in the world by acreage as it spans 30 acres. This ride has an incredible location, as it's built on top of, around, and through a heavily wooded hill. This conceals much of the layout. The ride has some fun drops that build up considerable speed, plus four forceful inversions, most notably the back-to-back -back vertical loops. This ride is also reasonably smooth too considering it's nearly 40 years old. The ride's biggest flaw is its pacing, as it does a ton of meandering between the inversions. I have a separate review in this coaster, but this is a must for Arrow fans or those who like bizarre one-of-a-kind coasters. The quantity of adult flats is limited, but the quality is not. The park's best attraction is easily Skyscreamer. This trio of SNS drop towers stands 30 stories tall, making them massive on their own right. But remember, they're located atop a hill. So when you're at the top, you're actually looking down 450 feet or 137 meters at Niagara Falls. This view is stunning, and the ride is quite good too for an SS model. This one runs a combo tower mode. The initial launch has some power and positive Gs. Then you get strong floater airtime at the top. You then slowly raise back up for the turbo drop sequence. The plunge is sudden and delivers a brief burst of airtime at the start of the descent before navigating a more controlled plunge in other drop towers. Still, the views and height make this ride special as I cover in our view. Star Voyager is the park's newest thrill ride and the only Zier star shape in North America. This ride isn't quite as crazy as it looks because it lacks any positive G's or laterals, but it does offer a very disorienting experience as the pendulum arm rocks while those gondolas also spin and rock. You don't invert as often as you may expect on this attraction, but many of the full revolutions fling you towards the ground, similar to what a booster does, which offers a scary visual plus some sustained airtime. This ride runs a long cycle, which is a hallmark of many rides at Marineland. 
Look up my review in this ride if you want more details on the experience. Magic Experience is an inverted Huss breakdance. Whenever your vehicle performs these half turns, you get some strong whip and laterals. Then when the arms start to bounce, you start feeling a little weightlessness, much like a spider ride. Do not miss this attraction if you like spinning rides. Skyhawk is one of the few Huss condors still remaining. It doesn't offer the best views due to the surrounding trees, but the added height of this aerial scrambler brings some thrills to the experience. Lastly, you have Flying Dragon. This one doesn't offer much in terms of airtime, but the downswings have some serious force to them. You're subjected to repeated positive Gs and also thrown forwards with each pass. Two ride types of this park lacks are dark rides and water rides, unless you count this polar themed splash pad for the kids. Beyond the rides, you have all sorts of animal exhibits peppered throughout the park. I like how the exhibits for the sea creatures included both upper and lower decks, offering two distinctly different views of the animals. My favorite enclosures were those for the whales and penguins because of how active those animals were. The park also offers shows similar to what SeaWorld does, but I've never seen any of these so I cannot speak to their quality. How much time you need at this park and whether I recommend it depends on your interests. I would recommend this park for those who like rare amusement rides. You won't find anything like Dragon Mountain elsewhere and there are some other interesting flat rides too. If you only come for these attractions, you likely won't need more than 3-4 to four hours tops. If you want to experience both the rides and animal attractions, there is enough to fill an entire day, especially with how much walking you'll have to do. This park is super weird though, one of the weirdest in the world. Some of those eccentricities are positive, but others left me frustrated like the empty pathways, enormous size, lack of bathrooms, and staggered openings. That if you're sensitive to animals in captivity, you may want to avoid this park given its history, but I'll let you make that decision for yourself. One thing that cannot be denied is how awesome this park's theme song is. Just take a listen. So those are my thoughts on Marineland, the gargantuan zoo and amusement park in Niagara Falls, Canada. What are your thoughts about this park, whether it be the rides, animals, or general layout? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.